the state-owned asset supervision um, unit, who I'm seated next to over there. Let me acknowledge the chairman of uh, Power China and indeed chairman of Power China International and uh, chief executive officer of Chair, sorry, China Africa Development Fund. Let me acknowledge uh, my colleagues in cabinet, those that are here with, with us um, uh, at this forum. It's also my duty to recognize our ambassadors, two ambassadors who I have cloned to become twins, the Zambia ambassador to China and the China ambassador to Zambia. I have issued instructions to them that they must work like Siamese twins uh, to get the job done. I also recognize our colleagues um, from um, businesses that are here, and I'm very delighted to notice that uh, we also have a financial institutions <coughs> in the house uh, and other strategic uh, organizations that would make what we're seeking to get done, if you like, implemented. I'm also happy to uh, notice that we have Josesco and uh, managing director here and his team and the uh, other um, associates. Uh, today is a very important day uh, for us, we believe for us in Zambia, in Zambia, and our people, our people in Zambia, who understand the importance of finding solutions to the challenges that we face, uh, the challenges of power. Um, I do uh, acknowledge that uh, we are aware of the difficulties that uh, the country is going through, essentially driven by what we thought was a good position to have power which is energy which is clean, basically hydro, high and large, and uh, we, I think, got into a comfort zone. And the drought came, occasioned by climate change, and in a short, we were down from basically generating power. We were actually exporting power in the region to most of our countries in the neighborhood that were getting power from Zambia, and it became routine for them to get power from Zambia. But one drought, the worst in the living memory, really created a wake-up, if you like, uh, drove a wake-up call to us that we have been living in a fragile situation and we needed to do something. So as you heard from the speakers that have spoken before me and the clips that we've watched, we now have a serious energy, in particular electricity deficit, from a surplus, just months ago. Tremendous situation, and I must admit that this is distorting our economic reconstruction plans. We took over a country that we needed to rebuild um, because I'm in China and I talk about it. And thank you to President Xi Jinping and the government and the people of China for helping us to work through our debt restructuring problem, uh, which consumed a lot of our time. Our first one and a half years, two years, was consumed largely by working on that. And many of you do remember uh, those who follow issues in countries like ours that. Uh, debt restructuring was done under the G20 framework and it was chaired, co-chaired by, uh, by China and France and uh, deputy, deputized by South Africa. We made a lot of progress in that area, we still have work to do, but then comes the drought and then further damage being done to our economy. So we are very delighted that uh, Power China has been able to organize this, this forum today this Zambia Power Development Forum, and we believe that uh, we'll be able to work and move towards meeting of minds to pull together the bits and pieces that have already been uh, put together. And, uh, and also, uh, I will touch, and I see my colleagues from CNMC here, seated over there. Thank you very much for yesterday's meeting. And um, the connection here to what we're doing is that uh, the mining sector is growing, we have revived it, and we are targeting 3 million tons of copper in 10 years' time. And to mine the copper, 
and other strategic minerals, if I may say it, using this opportunity, Zambia is endowed with the critical minerals. Copper, cobalt, nickel, manganese, lithium metals, and others. And for us to exploit these resources to help us drive our economic revival, growth, we need energy. For us to supply power to CNMC, Rwanda Copper Mines, uh, uh, you know, Muriashi, to the Chambeshi operations, and to other mines, uh, the colleagues that I'm seated with, uh, Power China, and the Vice Chair of the State Enterprise Unit, we are very pleased with the investments that are coming through from China on the mining sector, and we want to do more with yourselves. But the challenge is up. So hence the need for me to emphasize that this platform must pull together, cement the solutions that we can implement very quickly. The story of the deficit is clear, the cause for that is clear, but for me the fifth side of this risk, this problem, is an opportunity to do something that maybe we would have never invested this much time and effort to get it solved. So we believe that now we have a lifetime opportunity to work together with our partners in China, uh, different companies, starting with the government, President Xi Jinping, and our decision last year to involve our long-standing partnership, 60 years old today, uh, as constructed, or if you like, uh, by Chairman Mao here, uh, and then President Kaunda on our side. Uh, this path which was drawn by us, by our forefathers, we who are subsequent leaders uh, and those that will come after us must continue working this partnership of Zambia, China, the same historic, is delivered value, Tazara, so many projects. And following last year's decision for us to upgrade our relationship um, to uh, comprehensive strategic and cooperative partnership, we check listed, and I must say thank you to President Xi Jinping again uh, at this point. Uh, we, 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 we created a framework how we work together even deeper, uh, but we didn't just end there. We went further to isolate specific priority areas, priority projects that we needed to work on. And I'm very happy today to use this opportunity to report that we've made tremendous progress in the one year that has passed since the upgrade of our relationship. In many spheres, to give you an example, CNMC, um, I visited uh, my colleagues in the next to me, we visited the headquarters, we talked about the work that needed to be done, and uh, uh, true to what Zambians are calling our leadership now, they are calling us people who are waking up the dead from the graveyard and bring the dead back to life. So we brought back uh, 28 shaft in Rwanda. Rwanda was a dying town. There was no mining activity of substance for 21, 22 years. And because of last year's meeting, last year's decision through that uh, cooperative uh, uh, strategic partnership enhancement, we signed up one of the projects was to get CNMC to re-look at the 28 shaft the copper mine in Rwanda. And I'm very happy to say that today life is back in Rwanda. I think we want to start again. You may stand again. You can face the people. Please stand and face the people. And yesterday when we met, we agreed even to do more. And uh, because of the way we worked last year and the way we checklisted, remit, if you like, action matrix measures to be taken, we isolated specific things to be done. And we're taking them one by one. And I will make a concluding remark here before I sit to, to try and work in a similar way uh, for this year's pipeline uh, projects or programs we're working on. And uh, we will have one or two things outstanding. And one of them, I said to my team, I'm not going to Beijing before resolving that problem. And yesterday I was able to report to my friend, my colleague here, that we'll take that box as well. That is the way we want to work in any of the things that we do together. So, amongst the things that we took as priority in last year was energy, was electricity. And uh, by then, actually, we hadn't been uh, aware that the drought would be as 
bad as it began, as we know it today. So now we are here. We need practical solutions implemented at great speed. We need electricity energy in a diversified manner. Yes, the mix, solar, wind. Yesterday we had a meeting with colleagues working on green hydrogen. Longi, are they here? Longi is here. Thank you very much. We did fantastic. Yeah, you can stand up. I think we can clap. We also want to enhance the efficiencies around the hydro that we have. Hence, Power China's conversations we have in this video we saw about moving water from the northern corridor into, from Lapula northern corridor into the southern corridor through five provinces actually. But yet the distance is just less than 100 kilometers. If we do tap the water from Lopula into the Kapiri Basin, it's a distance of less than, if I'm not mistaken, 100 kilometers or thereabout. And then it will touch five provinces, Wapula, Copper Belt, Central, Lusaka, Southern, providing water for three applications. One is to generate more energy. Two is for irrigation, I will come to. Three is for human consumption. Because our capital city, Lusaka, is dependent on the Kafir River water base, if you like. Four for human, for animal consumption. And I say so as a big producer myself, I know the importance of water to our animals. So this is a dramatic, life changing initiative. And I wanted to emphasize this at this forum that uh, one good shot, one good investment would deliver multiple value to our economy, to jobs, to, let me be honest, survive. Water is life. So this is how important this forum is. And I'm glad that Power China, your initial work following the uh, May visit is already yielding specific, if you like, data that we can work on going forward. So here, let me return to the issue of uh, the portfolio of the energy we are talking about. We are talking about micro generation. Generation micro. Generation small, medium, large. Very important. And my colleague here, the vice chair of uh, the State Enterprise Supervision Unit, talked about something very important. It is our duty. People like me who are put in public office, it's our duty to make sure that uh, even the most vulnerable members of the community are taken care of, if not more taken care of than you, the big guys who can look after yourselves. Very important. So, rooftop solar. A family that can install rooftop solar with the technology that we can get from here through our partnership, different companies, Power China being one of them, and others can generate 50 kilowatts and they consume 40. Given the changes we've made, again, the economist colleague, where is he? Made very, there he is, made very good comments uh, as he was making a presentation there. I listened to him uh, to make sure that uh, some of the things we do are assessed correctly, including uh, in the environment where the laws are correct. First, the policies, the laws, regulations are correct. So I took note of what you said. And on that score, we are able to allow a household to generate through rooftop, rooftop solar 50 kilowatts. They consume 40, 10 they can put in the grid. Before the reforms we did just three months ago, you couldn't do this. Now with the changes we've made and the reforms we've put and the laws that were put in place, now a family at the bottom can generate 50 kilowatts, consume 40, and put to the grid for value 10. It's important for the people at the bottom. After all, they are the majority in our countries. So that's needed. Mini grids are needed. Large generation, medium large generation is needed. Onto the grid and off-grid.
So I would like this forum to consider this myriad of needs that the country and the energy needs, you know, uh, demands, so to say, rather than just focus on the big picture. But the big picture can be driven by the smaller bits and pieces put together. Yes, we always need big picture. And then the domestic market is important. But more importantly, we have an ambition that out of this crisis we can quickly get into a power surplus because the region needs a power. So when we consider investment for Power China, for Longi, for others, please do not look at Zambia only. Zambia is excellently located, excellently located to fly to most of the capitals in 14 or 15, 16 African countries is all within two hours. So locating your investment in Zambia is a good business decision. It's a very good business decision. I want to argue. So because of the bigger demand beyond the domestic demand, and also I must say the operating environment, the economic, legal, business operating environment is second to none. Stability. If there's any country that has benefited from stability, it's China. Your stability here has allowed you to invest more resources on the developmental side of the equation. And we can say Zambia Follow us, your steps, in that sense. So that's my invitation. And then we have associated sectors. Mining is very, very critical. Associated sectors that we must also invest in. Water harvest is another. Very important. I've already done the connection when we move water from the Ruapula into the Gafio Basin, the applications are multiple. The value is multiple. And for us, that meets our economic construction and development agenda. Very, very important for jobs, for business opportunities, and for many other things. Consequential. I've always said, even in my opposition days, that we Africans like saying we are nice people to each other. We look after each other. But we cannot share poverty. No matter how good our hearts are, we cannot share power. We need to create value. And I think value will come from this energy sector, the mining sector, the water sector, harvest, agriculture, irrigation agriculture still needs power. And I must say, I expect that our package of solutions must include value addition, to look at value addition in our country to extract the mines, minerals, to build transformers, electric cables for the domestic market, regional, Africa, and global market. That is really what I'm looking for. Let me close by saying thank you to President Chijun Ming for the vision and leadership in this country and for the decision we made last year to broaden and deepen our partition. And consequentially, because of that, we are having these discussions and a forum like that, like this one. So to say, thank you to Power China for organizing this and to all those in attendance and that the Zambia government is a worthy partner. We will support the initiatives, issues that stand in the way of implementing the projects. We will work on them. The President has set up a presidential delivery unit to address the bureaucracy in the public sector in our country, to be able to unlock transactions so they can move quickly and get into, if you like, implementation stage and conclusion and the consequential or sub subsequential <coughs> benefits that are intended to be achieved should be achieved faster. Thank you very much. Wish you well in the forum. Wish ourselves. Well in the fourth session.
人。我们坚信，以中国电建为代表的中国企业，定将与赞比亚共和国的各界同仁一道，落实好中两国政府元首的共识，以新一届中非合作论坛峰会为契机，全面加强互利合作，造福两国人民，不断擦亮。